Welcome back everybody to another lesson in C Sharp programming. We last left off with outputting data to the screen, taking data in from the keyboard and storing it inside of a variable of type string, and then redisplaying that data back out to the screen. And what I would like to cover today are the other common data types that you would use for declaring variables and how to use them. So let's begin. First, let's start off by making a brand new project. Let's go up to File, New, and Project. Be sure that we still have Visual C Sharp as the programming language selected, and we have Consult App.NET Framework selected. I am storing all of these lessons in the same folder, so I'm going to change the folder location and then rename this project to Lesson 2. And now we have our lovely template of code. We're still going to ignore everything for now except for what goes inside of this main method. The first data type we learned how to use from the last lesson was the string data type. This is meant to hold a sequence of letters, numbers, and even special characters that we were pulling in from the keyboard and storing them inside of a variable called input. But instead of using the keyboard to assign a string to our variable, we're going to use just code. To do that, we still use the equal operator, but our sequence of characters must be wrapped inside of double quotation marks. So I'm going to type out a message that's going to contain letters and numbers and even special characters. And then end with our semicolon. And we've now declared and initialized our string variable input. So let's display it to the screen. We still use the console write line method to display anything onto the screen and put the cursor on the next line. And then let's not forget about our pause feature where we want to be able to prompt our user to press the enter key to close the program. And then we still use the read line method so that we, we have to hit the enter key to close the program. Now let's see all this in action. Press the start button, our program builds, and there you have it. Everything that we typed inside of the double quotation marks gets assigned to the variable input and then gets printed out onto the screen and our user is prompted to press the enter key to close the program. Next, I would like to talk about a data type that's meant to hold numerical values. A number that does not have a decimal point is referred to as an integer. And in programming, we use the keyword int, which is short for the data type integer. I'm going to name this variable number one because remember that a variable name can contain a number, it just cannot begin with a number. And I'm going to initialize it with the value 0. Then we have numerical data that does have a decimal point, which we typically use the data type double to store them in. So I'm going to make another variable called number 2, and I'm going to initialize it with 0, 0.0, just so that I can visually see that I'm using a decimal point number to assign to our variable number 2. Now that we have three different types of variables, I want to be able to show you how to convert from one data type to the other. In particular, how to convert a string variable into a numerical variable. But this time, we're going to use the keyboard to bring our data in and not use code to assign data to a variable. So first, let's ask our user to input an integer value. We're going to use the write method this time because we want the cursor to remain on the same line after the message is displayed. So let's prompt our user to enter an integer value. Since we're asking for an integer value, we will be using our number one variable because we declared it of type integer. And we're going to assign it whatever we can pull in from the keyboard using the read line method. But notice now this red squiggly line underneath the read line method. If I mouse over it, we can see at the bottom of the IntelliSense that we cannot implicitly convert type string to an integer. Because remember that the read line returns data of type string. And we're trying to take string data and store it inside of a variable that's meant to hold integer data. And we cannot do that without some sort of conversion in between them. To convert one data type to another, we're going to introduce a new class called convert. This class actually has a variety of methods that are designed to convert data types from one to the other. The one that we're particularly interested in is one that's going to return data of type integer, and that is the toInt 
32 method. So I'm going to wrap the read line method inside of the to int 32 method so that when I enter a number from the keyboard, which actually starts as a string, it'll get converted into an integer. Now let's ask our user to enter in a double value that we want to store inside of our number two variable. So let's call console.write again and prompt our user to enter a double value and assign number two whatever comes in from the keyboard, but we have to convert the string data to a double this time. And believe it or not, there is a method called toDouble that will handle that for us. So now we've taken string data and converted it to a double and stored it inside of our number two variable. Before I go any further, you're probably wondering what will happen when I'm prompted to enter in a integer value, but I enter something that is not a numerical value, such as letters or even special characters. Well, let's find out. I'm going to go ahead and start the program, and I'm being prompted to enter in an integer value, but I'm just going to enter in some letters and watch what happens. We end up throwing a runtime exception, and to be more specific, it is a format exception because the input string was not in the correct format, basically saying that we are trying to take what we brought in from the keyboard, which was the letters ASDF, and we're trying to convert the letters ASDF into an integer value, which is what you cannot do. So therefore, we have just literally crashed the program. So for now, just take on good faith that we're asking for an integer value to be entered. So let's just enter an integer value. And then when we're asked to enter a double value, let's enter in a number that has a decimal point. So now that we're going to have two good numerical values, let's do some simple math with these numbers and store the answer inside of another variable. One thing I'm going to mention very briefly is that a double data type can actually hold a much larger number than an integer data type. Because of that, our new variable that we're going to use is going to be type double. And we're just going to name this variable answer. And the first mathematical operation that we're going to do is going to be simple addition. So we're just going to add number one and number two together and then display the answer. Let's use the console.write line method this time because we're going to do all four operations of math addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So what we want to say is we want to show what our first number is, and then we want to display that we're going to do addition, and then show what our next number is, and then display an equal operator, and then show what the answer is. So let's see how that looks for now. Press the Start button. Our program is building. And here we go. So let's enter in an integer value. I will put in the value 5. And then let's enter a double value like, I don't know, 12.3. So if we add these two together, I expect to have 17.3 as the answer. And there you have it. 5 plus 12.3 is equal to 17.3. Press the Enter key to close the program. So now let's try subtraction. We don't have to redeclare our variable answer of type double anymore. We can just simply reuse the variable since it's already been displayed after calculating the addition. This time we're going to assign it a new value, which is going to equal number one minus number two. And then we're going to redisplay the answer. But instead of typing everything back out, I'm just going to copy the display line that I wrote previously for the addition and just change the add sign to the minus sign. Let's see what this looks like. Let's go ahead and use the same values that we used last time, 5 and 12.3, which we had 17.3 for the sum of the addition, and then I expect the difference of 5 minus 12.3 to be negative 7.3. And there we have it. Press Enter to close the program. And lastly, let's do multiplication and division. Since all we're doing is changing the operator sign, we're going to copy the last two lines that we wrote and paste them, and then just change the minus sign to the multiplication sign, and then paste it one more time 
and do division. Now let's see all of this run. We're still going to use 5 and 12.3, which I believe the product is going to be 61.5, but I'm not entirely sure what the quotient will be, so let's find out. I was correct on the multiplication, and the quotient ends up being 0 0.40650, and it looks like it repeats after that. And our program is completely done. And that is where we'll end our lesson for today. We've now seen three different data types that we can declare variables with, and there are plenty more to come that I will talk about in future lessons. We were able to take string data that comes in from the keyboard and convert it to some sort of numerical value, provided that the data inside of the string only contained numerical values, and then we were able to perform some simple math with those values and display the answers out onto the screen. I hope that this was easy to follow and that you were able to learn a little bit more about the C-sharp programming language. If that is true, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and then stay tuned for the next lesson where I will cover if statements that will allow certain blocks of code to run under a given condition. Take care, everybody.